Hello friends and welcome to 3 AM Europe. In this clip, I just want to briefly comment upon what has been happening during the past couple of weeks, which is which at least for me personally has been rather shocking. Now, most of you have heard of the famous and some even see and call him the most notorious atheist of the last decade, Richard Dawkins. With his book, The God Delusion, Dawkins, together with other new atheists such as Christopher Hitchens, Sam Harris, and Daniel Dennett, quickly became known as the Four Horsemen, not of the Apocalypse, but of the New Atheism. But nevertheless, the momentum of the movement of the New Atheist seems it disappeared mostly with the tragic death of Christopher Hitchens. But this clip will not focus on the New Atheism and its future, but instead, I, I want to take a look at what happened to Dawkins recently. Now, he was supposed to speak in Berkeley, California, and the event was to be hosted by a radio station, KPFA. But what happened was that this station basically canceled his show because of apparent Islamophobia on the side of Dawkins. Now, whether Dawkins is Islamophobic or not, now that is up to you to decide since... I don't know his heart, and I don't think you know his heart, only God knows his heart. But nevertheless, if Dawkins is called Islamophobic solely due to his remarks about the religion of Islam, then that is not the clear definition of Islamophobia as far as I'm concerned, because of the single reason that he intellectually challenges beliefs and does not attack people or does not incite any violence. For simply critiquing a set of ideas that have been summed up within a system of faith, which we call Islam today, that is not racism, folks. For simply sharing his own views of disapprovement, for which he knows that he will be attacked, and here I mean, and I speak about physical attack, as he has analyzed Islam and its apparent danger for Western civilization as he sees it, once again, it does not make him an Islamophobic. Do I agree with everything Dawkins uh, criticizes and gives a critique about Islam? No, I, I actually don't. Uh, we don't have any time to go into all of these matters, but as a matter of fact, Dawkins has not only criticized Islam, he has also criticized Christianity, not to mention creationism, which I am a believer in personally. So, I don't, ag I don't agree with everything that he criticizes about the religions, such as Islam or Christianity or even creationism. And the other question is, do I agree with the way he criticizes Islam and all other religions? And my answer is no, I personally don't. Some of his statements are, in my opinion, too far-fetched, and when one brings about caricature in one's own criticism of whatever that subject matter may be, it basically accomplishes little to almost nothing. So instead of enlightening and furthering the discovery of truth, it only closes the minds and ears of the people that you actually seek to win. Nevertheless, just because there are statements, and here I want you to really, really ponder upon this, just because there are statements that sound provocative, it does not mean that we are supposed to ban anyone who may challenge a set of ideas, be they religious, philosophical, political, or and so on. What may seem provocative and insulting in your ears, for instance, can sound challenging to someone else, but also stimulating to the third person. So as long as there is not a call for pushing and inciting violence against certain people, provocative and offensive speech or speeches against ideas will only remain subjectively provocative and offensive to the individual hearer. So with this current happening with Dawkins, not to mention what is going on all throughout universities in the United States and also here in Europe, with this movement to ban free speech, I believe that as never before, we should not only reaffirm the significance of free speech as one of the pillars for our society and civilization, we should also uphold the flag of freedom, which includes particularly provocative speech. That doesn't, it doesn't mean that you should agree with the speech itself, but if someone can label Dawkins and anyone else's speech provocative, then someone is able to 
basically say that I'm coming with provocative and offensive speech. So, as it has been said, it is provocative speech itself that needs more freedom, not less freedom. And it is in this case that freedom of speech doesn't exist to protect only polite and easy conversations that are free from any possible offense. Freedom of speech exists to protect things people don't want to say because they know that is unpopular. And it is unpopular speech itself that needs to be protected. And it can only protect any of us if it protects all of us. I do recognize that some people are afraid to, to, to just go, is all unpopular speech to be protected? Well, let's take a look at from this perspective. If you are compromising and say that one certain kind of speech, which does not invite and even incite violence against groups and peoples and so on, if you are banning that kind of speech, you are basically on a slippery slope of banning all kinds of speeches and that is really really a dangerous path to take so so here are my thoughts and my questions to you as we are ending this clip as a society we have the ability and the opportunity to choose for ourselves and for future generations what our civilization will look like are we now creating the world order that George Orwell in his book 1984 foretold about? Are we now creating and perhaps even putting the last bits of the puzzle where the thought police is established where neither one of us will be able to utter a single word in the frightening assumption that someone may be offended? Are we creating the ministry of truth who can tell us what to say and what not to say? what to believe in or what not to believe in, otherwise we will be punished. With appropriate penalty, of course. Has the current 21st century thought police, even known as the champions of political correctness, laid down such a dangerous path out of which it will be impossible to emerge? Could it be that this concept of social justice warriors that the regressive left has come up with who seem to tell themselves that they champion for that which are the bulwarks of Western civilization, liberty, diversity, and so on, are actually bringing about, by the suspension of free speech and dialogue, and even free thought, a revolution to establish dictatorships? Is Big Brother watching us, and that we are coming closer and closer to totalitarian societies? Could it be that while all animals are equal, some animals are more equal than others. Could it be that there are not only hot potatoes in our society, but that there are certain sacred cows that one is not even allowed to question? Topics and things like feminism, homosexuality, transgenderism, Darwinism, Islamic violent extremism, mass media and its role, the past 15 years of U.S. and Western destructive foreign policy, and of course the, the the theopolitical agenda of the Roman Catholic Church. Could it be that once you do not toe with the so-called party line, once you do not conform to the apprehended rule or standard decided by the politically correct thought police, how good, well-intentioned, and even logical your arguments may be presented, as we saw with the Google employee, or I would rather say former Google employee, who questioned this regressive left policy and thought that is within Google, and we could see that he was fired. By questioning these sacred cows and some of the topics that I just mentioned, you have per definition automatically become a racist, a sexist, a homophobe, a transphobe, an Islamophobe, and whatever else you may think of. Now, could it be that once you look beyond this utopian mountain that is under construction, and where the sun and the rainbow disappear, could it be that this romantic and idealistic picture of the future becomes not only a bit cloudy, but actually frightening? Well, welcome to 1984, but also welcome to 2017. Not only is this scenario imaginable, 
I believe that this is unfortunately a reality where we are headed. Because speech and free speech is so important and so significant for our society, I stand with Dawkins and I stand with him, not for what he says, but for him giving the opportunity to say what he thinks is right. And you know what? Orwell was right. He said that in a time of universal deceit, telling the truth is a revolutionary fact. And Orwell also said that the further a society drifts from the truth, the more it will hate those that speak it. And I believe that we are on the verge of this catastrophic path, which will lead us to very, very dangerous grounds. So once again, friends, thank you for listening. And thank you for joining us. And remember that if you are watching and you are listening to this, you are part of the spiritual resistance.